Welcome back, everyone. So this video is phase two of the New Bedford Creative ARPA grant programs. It's for Art is Everywhere and Wicked Cool Places. My name is Margot Saulnier. I'm here with Marianella Perry, and we are going to walk you through phase two of applying to this grant program. So Marianella, take it away. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. I am going to share my screen and show you the email that you will be receiving when you're ready for phase two. So this is what you will be receiving. And you'll be able to go ahead and look at questions ahead of time if you need to. But otherwise, you'll get this email and you'll be able to go back into your form. my submissions. Here it is. Okay, so actually this is good. If you have multiple applications, you'll see all of your applications numbered and what they're for and when you started them. So I'm actually going to click on my 0003. That's the one that I was in just now. And you'll see a couple of tabs here, activity, messages, and forms. To access your phase two form, you want to go into forms. And then you'll see a little blue button open. This is where you'll go to continue on with your phase two. Here we are. So please read carefully. There are three sections in phase two to complete the application. Um, if you do not provide complete and accurate info, this could result in a rejected application. So we tried to break it down for you in the three parts. It's number one, business information. Again, the first section is business information. So only click yes if you are a for-profit company, and this includes sole proprietors, you own your own company. Um, I'll walk you through that as we continue. Number two is demographic information. And number three is project information. This is the most important section and the only section that will be viewed and scored by an independent review committee. So just keep that in mind. We also do break it down by points and also keep in mind that no one on the New Bedford Creative Team scores applications. So we're here to help, but we do not score those applications. So number one, are you currently in business? So this is for profit only. I can go through both. So I can do no. This is what it looks like when you go forward with a no. And then if you are, you want to click yes. And this is where you'll be putting all of your information. This is a drop down option. I think it was just arts and entertainment. So I will go ahead and put sole proprietorship here, but you do have other options based on the structure of your business. Most people will be a sole proprietor or an LLC, um, but we have other options if you're another form of company. Date business started, you have to go based on whatever your, your personal date is. I'm just putting on today's date, fill it out, and then here we go, owner name, owner address, owner email, how many part-time employees do you employ? This is if you really are employing someone part-time or full-time. If you are not, you wanna put zero here. Most sole proprietors, you're gonna say zero. Um, if you do have part-time employees or full-time employees, then you know add them here. This does not include contracted workers. If you hire an accountant, if you hire a bookkeeper, if you hire a lawyer, they are not employees of your company and do not count here. These are only people working directly for you that you are going to provide them with, uh, you know, a W-2 at the end of the year. Your type of business, this is also a drop down. So you have many different options here. Please read them carefully and then pick whatever makes the most sense for you. We're going with arts and entertainment and recreation. This is also what I chose in the first phase. 
do you conduct business in another, in another language? If you click yes, there is also a drop down where you can pick the language that you also conduct business in. Okay, and you do have other options here. Yes, no, prefer not to say. I'll go with yes. Okay, now you're getting into your demographic information. These are all drop downs. So these are all required, but they do have prefer to self describe, which will provide you uh, with uh, fill in the, the blank um, where you can self describe. Another option is prefer not to say. So um, although all of these demographic information are required, those are options for you. I'm leaving this one as prefer not to say since we just want off of your description there. And then again, everything is a drop down. So whatever makes the most sense for you. Okay. All right. That brings us to project information. This is super, super, super important that you fill everything out thoroughly. And I believe I put fun art on the project, project title. So this is my project title. Project locations for number two. Um, this can be a neighborhood or a community or the exact address of the project. I know there's some projects that tend to have different locations. So I'm just using a specific address for this. So you might be talking to for example, the parks department, and there are many parks in New Bedford, you might be talking to the library system, and there's many libraries in New Bedford. So say that here, you don't have to have all of your locations 100% confirmed. But if you are awarded, you should at least be in conversation with the places where you want to do your project. Number three we are going to does this location require permission of the property owner so you can click no but i just for the sake of showing you when you click yes we do ask that you upload a letter of approval from the property owner and this can be an email i mean it doesn't have to be a formal letter we just need to see that you have spoken with the owner of that property and they have agreed for you to do their project at their venue or um, on their property if it's outside. So that's what this is for. And you can see too, here in the light text, you'll see all the types of files that are accepted. So if you do have any trouble and it's not one of these files, that could be why. I'm gonna go ahead and then I'm gonna choose a file for a letter of approval. And this is what it looks like when you upload, okay? You have options to delete and also to download if you need to. Number four, does this location require any permits from the city? If you click no, you can just continue on, but this is the same thing. If you click yes, now you'll have to go through and, and list you know, the types of permits or approvals needed. As Marco said, this could be, you know, if you don't have them yet, who you're in discussions with. My recommendation in this section is to be clear if you um, know what types of permits are needed or what types of permits you will be um, researching. If it's on city property, it's most likely that you will need an, a special events permit. If it's on parks property, you will have to fill out a special application and get approval from the Parks Commission. These are things that many people have done successfully, so I don't want to dissuade you, but um, we're not ask, we are absolutely not asking for you to have the permit in hand. We are asking what permits you need to apply for, okay? So this is a good, uh, research if you want to do your project in a certain neighborhood, a certain block. Um, there's an empty lot of land in your neighborhood. 
um, it's very good to find out, is this city property? Is it state property? Um, is it federal? Pro there's there's a lot of different, is it private property? So there's those are the, the options, private, city, state, federal. Within the city, it could come under different departments within the city. And these are the types of things, if you do not know the answer, um, and you haven't been able to find it through the city of New Bedford website that um, Marianella or I could help with. But don't yes. wait until the deadline. Do it, to oh. figure it out way in advance. <laughs> yeah, this should be done sooner than later, but this is why we're doing this so everybody has an idea of what, what to expect, okay? So I am gonna click no on this. You've already seen that you will need to list the types of permits or approvals needed if you click yes. So we're going to no. Okay. Narrative. This is where you'll describe your project. And you do have two descriptions. So we're looking at art is everywhere right now. Okay. Please be sure to click on which narrative selection you're working on. This one is for art is everywhere. Okay. Let's stay with this question for just a couple minutes because we have combined the applications. This narrative is the only question that is different. So if you are applying to Art is Everywhere, you are answering a different question than if you are applying to Wicked Cool Places. Everything else on this application are the same except for this one question. So if you are applying to Art is Everywhere, make sure you are answering what challenge does your community or the city of New Bedford currently face and what creative solution does your Art is Everywhere project offer to address this challenge utilizing the arts, culture, or creativity. If it's Wicked Cool Places, make sure you are answering how does your project use placemaking or placekeeping to directly involve or impact residents, visitors, or businesses in New Bedford's neighborhoods? Having very clear answers and descriptions between this narrative answer and your community benefit answer, that's the majority of where your, your application is being scored. And um, if you score high enough to receive uh, funding. So we have selected the art is everywhere for the narrative selection. Here you go. Again, you'll also see another little description at the bottom. So you have your question right there. You don't have to scroll back up. You'll see it. Art is everywhere. I'm just putting test here for our test application. We do allow for um, a, a lengthy answer here. Uh, I would advise not to have pages of a description, um, but if you can describe your project in 500 to 1000 words, uh, I think that is sufficient. If you can describe it in less, uh, that's fine, but make sure that you really are answering the, the questions. Uh, that we have two or three sentences is not going to cut it one paragraph not going to we need we need information about the challenge information about the neighborhood um, information about your project and how you are going to address it for art is everywhere so i did highlight on the screen 500 to a thousand words is sufficient um, and you should have enough space to do that here so community benefit is just as important as your narrative. So in this section, you want to be describing um, how your project will benefit the community and who your intended audience is. So this is one where um, we have seen that, that the projects that are funded go into some detail about the audiences served and have some kind of statistical research to back it up. It could be from census data that is available online or other um, resources that 
you might have um, working with a nonprofit organization or um, uh, doing your own research. So this and the narrative are both 10 points, which is the most amount of points uh, given to score the application. Just make sure you use up the space as much as you can. Um, and would you say that 500 to 1,000 as well is sufficient for the words? Yeah. Okay. All right. Now we're looking at partnerships. So this is where you want to list anybody involved in the project. And we tried to give you some examples. So individuals, community groups, organizations, companies. We just want some short bios or descriptions for the core team involved. That definitely helps down below in the description, we highly recommend that you list your partnerships first and then include short biographies of, or descriptions of the main project leaders. So, you know, if you think about someone is volunteering their time to read and score applications, you want to put up front all the, the list of all of your partners. And as Mary and Ella said, that's, that can be individuals, but it can be groups or organizations or companies and then go into the biographies. I've seen that if you if you front load with the biographies and you put your list at the end, it does not highlight how many partners you have. So, so put the partnership list first, then go into details. Number eight, we're going into the planning and the timeline. Your planning and timeline should be taking place in 2024, which we do have another, a, a little, um, description here. Um, it should be taking place through January through December of next year, 2024. And we do recommend that you list month by month types of activities needed to implement your project. If this is a recurring project that you've done before, you may already have a timeline. We don't need a detailed timeline, but we do need you to list month by month what types of activities need to happen in order to make a successful project take place. If you are doing a project in the summertime, there's still going to be some planning that happen earlier on. So it's fine to, to just list that um, prep preparatory meetings. Um, you want to list if you're applying to permits, um, if you're meeting with your partners, um, if you need to have contracts signed by a certain date, um, if you're going to do a call for art or a call for artist quali qualifications, if, if you're working with artists, those are the types of things that are needed. If it's event-based, what um, is your timeline for leading up to the event and what are what's necessary in order to make your event successful? Um, Again, it doesn't need to be super detailed, but we do need you to have a reasonable timeline. These applications are going to our review committee. Um, our reviewers need to know that you have thought this through, that it's very clear um, that if you are awarded funding, that you will be successful in, in implementing it. So once you're done filling out number eight, we're moving on to the dollar amount requested. Um, I'm requesting 6,000. I just want to point out the dollar amount requested has to be between 2,500, 2,500, and $20,000. So try plugging in 25,000. So you'll get an error message number must be between 2,500 and 20,000, and it can be anything within that frame. Yes, yeah, so let me put it back so we don't get an error message. <laughs> Let's yeah. put it at 6,000. <laughs> and then the dollar amount of total cost of project. So we have funded projects that in full or in part, but most of the projects that we are funding are partially funded. So you are getting a certain percentage from us, and then you are also receiving funding from another source. So this total dollar amount is the total cost of what it would take for you to do a successful project. So Marinella, I think it's fine to put 10,000 there. That means that 
you're going to get $4,000 from maybe you're going to go apply to the local cultural council grant or mass cultural council or mass humanities has other grant programs that are available, or you have sponsorships from, from companies that are going to cover that um, additional costs. Once you get past your total cost of your project, is your project scalable? We recommend clicking yes, unless you are going to say, if you say no, um, and we are at a point in, in our determining um, who is receiving funding, and you are saying you need that $6,000, and, and you can't make it a smaller project, or you can't scale it down in any way that you might not receive any funding. So for those that are scalable, you might not be receiving the full amount of the dollar requested. So if you click no and we're at that point, then you, you're going to get a decline letter from us. If the review committee says, if you click yes, then maybe you get $3,000 and that gets you partially way to uh, a successful project. If it's not a clear cut, yes or no, there is this other section, um, and then you can send us a message uh, or explain why. Thank you, Margot. That definitely clarifies. I will be clicking yes. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's time for your budget. Okay. We are allowing the file upload because it's easier for, it seems like it will be easier for everybody to be able to just choose their file. These tend to be larger files, but below you'll see everything that we'll accept. It should be itemized. You wanna make sure it includes project costs and project revenue. Your project costs are all of the expenses. This is what you would use the grant money to pay for. Um, it could be a venue rental. It could be materials if you're using paint or um, any other kind of equipment. Uh, speakers, that kind of thing. Um, if you're paying someone to do some of the work. Uh, so that I think is more, um, it is easier to come up with a list of what your project costs will be. The project revenue is going to be how you're going to pay for the project. So in addition to the, if you receive the grant from us, what other um, additional revenue might be coming in? And I, I mentioned it earlier with the total cost of your budget. If it's higher than what you are requesting, where are you gonna fill in that gap? Is it coming from um, individual donations? Is it coming from another grant resource? Is it coming from um, companies that will sponsor you or, or provide some in-kind support. So that is what you want to include on the budget. Again, it does not need to be this huge, complex, detailed budget. Um, it could be four to 10 items in each category. Your project costs are going to be a longer list, most likely than your project revenue. But um, if you do need templates, we, we do have templates available. And uh, any questions, you can reach out to us. Absolutely. I'm going to go ahead and choose a file here for the budget, just so you can see what it'll look like. There you go. There's a the budget. Now moving on to 13. This is for additional materials, anything that will support your application. I will just go in and show you what I've got. So I've got a flyer some promotional materials that I want to upload. And a resume as well. But this is just a few examples of what you could, of what could be useful here. I don't know if you have other suggestions, Marco. Yeah, so I do. So this is the first time you're proposing this project. Even though you might not have materials on the project that you're proposing, um, we do recommend that you upload um, previous projects or previous initiatives that you have been involved in. If you are 
an artist or a creative, you do want to um, include your resume or previous, if you're a performer, previous flyers that you've been in. If you have done this project in the past, and this is the second or third time that you're applying to this grant program, photos and videos are a great way to demonstrate to the review committee that you will do a successful project in 2024. Um, and it can be, uh, there's, Marinella has uploaded a PDF, but there's a lot of other uh, file types that we will accept. And if you have photos and videos, send us the uh, links to videos, send us links to photo albums, and it will be great for your application. And this brings us to our last question. Did you request language assistance? And for this one, I will click no, but there is an option if you click yes to select the language that you requested the assistance in. So make sure you click submit and you should receive your successfully submitted message. And then not only do you get the message, but you do get an email as well confirming. And we will need a certain amount of time to have all of the applications reviewed and scored. And then we meet with our review committee sometime in November. Um, so we will be announcing the winners of this uh, sometime in December. I don't have exact dates yet, but we will be notifying people so that if, for example, your project starts in January, that you will know if you've been funded or not before then. And for those who are accepted, you will receive an acceptance letter. And there are several steps that you need to go through that include a couple forms to fill out as well as a grant agreement. And, uh, and then you'll be on your way. For everyone who is not awarded a grant, there is an opportunity for you to meet with Marianella and I. We do ask our reviewers for comments on applications. So uh, we can take a look to see where certain points were taken off of your application so that you, you can come back and, and reapply and have a stronger application the next time. There are also other funding opportunities and we have a list on New Bedford Creative's website. On our fundraising page is a list of over 100 grants that you might also be eligible to apply for. So we do recommend that you begin doing a little bit of research to see what other funding opportunities might apply to you, your project and, and the work that you do, uh, because there are a lot of opportunities out there, especially right now. And we want everyone to take advantage of those. Marinella, anything else you would like to add? I wanted to show the message that they'll be receiving via email saying that they completed an additional form. I have it up on, on the screen now. And you'll also receive that in submittable. Other than that, I think we're good. Good luck with your submission and thank you for watching.